Hello and welcome to my video on floodplains and levees. Um, in this little video um, I'll be explaining the formation of both of those landforms. Um, you can see my keywords in the top right of the screen. Um, here. Um, we're using all those throughout this short video. Um, so, floodplains and levees are depositional landforms. Um, they're created by deposition and transportation uh, in the lower course of a river's long profile, um, where the river is high in discharge and velocity, um, but is also transporting lots of load. So wherever you get any areas of low energy, e.g. when the river floods and goes onto the floodplain, then you will get deposition. Um, when a river goes up to the top of its banks, we call that the bankfall discharge. Um, and when it goes over that bankfall discharge, we, we say it, um, it exceeds its bankfall discharge, uh, i.e. it floods and goes onto the floodplain. Um, and when it does, um, it takes sediment or load with it, which is then deposited on the, on the floodplain as a what we call alluvium, which is any f river deposits. Um, the key to understanding these is uh, what we call the sorting, the vertical and horizontal sorting. Um, larger particles will be deposited nearer to the river's channel, uh, and further away from the river's channel, the particles will get smaller and smaller. This is called um, vert horizontal sorting, um, I, the idea that it gets smaller the further you go away. This happens on the other side as well. Um, this is due to uh, the different transportational processes. So the, the ones closest to the river's channel uh, will be taken there via traction because it's uh, the largest particles that can only be taken a short distance. Uh, a little bit further away, we're going to have uh, slightly smaller particles which get there by saltation. Um, a little bit further away again, we're going to get stuff that gets there by suspension. Uh, notice the absence of solution, because those particles, of course, have been dissolved and can never be deposited. Um, this also happens, of course, um, vertically, and we call that vertical sorting. So nearer the floodplain, you get smaller and smaller stuff that's been deposited with successive um, flood events. Um, and, of course, that would happen further out. But So you would have sorting all the way along, vertically as well as horizontally. Of course, these particles would be sorted vertically, but they're all smaller in general than these particles which are nearer um, the river's channel. This, over time, creates, because the larger particles nearer, creates higher banks near the river channel, um, and these are called levees. So the whole thing is called the floodplain, and uh, the raised areas next to the channel are called the levees. Um, if you want to get full marks in the exam, you need to use all of these keywords that I've put here. And here is my finished little masterpiece that, um, that shows basically the, the main points, again with the keywords still there. But you can see this horizontal and vertical stratification that I was talking about. These whole things at A-level are called um, strat stratified deposits. You can get away with saying sorted at GCSE. Um, the idea that it's made of alluvium um, and then the whole thing's on the floodplain. These two bluff lines at the sides. So, floodplains and levees. So, to take it up to A level standard, what you'd have to then bring in is the idea of the hydraulic radius and the wetted perimeter. Uh, and just in short, um, the idea there, of course, is that now the river's gone over onto the floodplain, you can see that what would have been a relatively low wetted perimeter with a large cross-sectional area and therefore a high hydraulic radius would now all of a sudden be a very very large wetter perimeter in relation to imagine the thin amount of water on the top which would be a low cross-sectional area um, a small cross-sectional area sorry and therefore a very low hydraulic radius even lots of friction uh, and therefore very low energy and therefore deposition